Hello, welcome. This is going to be a little intro to a very long playthrough of Sid Meier's Pirates. It's going to be heavily edited though and in four parts. So I certainly understand if you don't want to watch the whole thing, but I recommend if you have any interest in this game or don't know much about it to watch the little the beginning, like the first half maybe of part one and then the then part four, which will be the shortest part. So, Sid Meier's Pirates released in 1987. This is not the original box, though. I believe this would be the third box. Also, Europe had a different box, so there's at least four boxes existing for this game. And this box would have been used for all computer releases. My sticker is off. I have the barcode still and a piece of the sticker, but that would have wrapped around the box and told you which platform it was. So this is the Commodore box, but it's the same as every other box. You can see on the back, there's screenshots for the IBM Tandy version, the Commodore version, and the Macintosh version. And being a later release version, it also lists the awards, or some of the awards it won. It's a nice box, though I would have preferred artwork. This on the, is the manual with the artwork that appeared on one of the box covers. So this manual is for every version, not just the Commodore version. It has illustrations, no color, but it's a really nice manual with a lot of, a lot of details. Of course, gives you a lot of detail on the ships as well there in the game. I scanned only a little bit, like the first page and the last couple pages, which is written here by Sid Meier and Arnold Hendrick. He uh, worked on the scenarios, I believe, or Sid Meier designed and programmed the game. So then you get some inserts here that were just thrown in every box, even though this one here is for the IBM. DOS version, and this is the sheet for Commodore users that has the controls and a few other details, and the program disk, which my sticker, my label here fell off while I was doing this playthrough. It's, it's just, you know, the stickiness dried up and it just fell off. Of course, you can't save on the disk. You need, you know, blank disks to use for saves. You don't need this many, you just need one. One side will hold four, four save files. And it comes with a map. And it's a really nice map, the whole, the whole Caribbean. This varies depending on what time period you're playing in. It does lay, put years next to some of the cities because you can play in, I don't know, five or six time periods. So, like some of these are like colonies that weren't founded yet depending on what time you're playing in. So the map will vary slightly depending on which which time you select. But after a while, you know, you it's a nice map to look at, but you'll probably learn if you played the game as much as I did. You, you reach a point where you kind of just know where everything is, so you don't need to reference the map. And then there's just a, a product catalog for Microprose. Microprose itself was co-founded by Sid Meier and Bill Steely, who was a was a pilot, probably still is a pilot. So they made a lot of um, flight sims early on. The company is known for simulations overall. So there's you know one of the earlier pirates boxes. That's the art that was on the, the manual. They also sold T-shirts. <laughs> I wonder if anyone ordered these for eight ninety five, and posters for four ninety five. So. This is my favorite game of all time, which is why I'm giving it this special treatment, why there's a, a blog entry for this game, which mostly has images of what's in here, what I just showed you. And there's an interview with Sid Meier I scanned from Video Games and Computer Entertainment Magazine. So there's a little bit more on the blog if you want to check that out. And I still recommend playing this game, but of course, if you can't get your hands on this, and if you don't own an old computer or Commodore, it's probably a pain to get to run on modern, you know, Windows machines. Maybe there's emulators. I'm not really familiar with those, but you do have the option of playing this game instead. I don't know if you'd call it a remake or a sequel, but it's essentially all of the gameplay found in this with some more added features and of course updated graphics. This one's from 2004, so a little easier to get. Pirates did have an upgraded version called Pirates Gold that came out in the early 90s. 
So that's an option too, but I have a DOS version. I don't have the box for that because I have it in a compilation, but it's kind of hard to get to run anyway. You can play Pirates on the NES. I don't know how good that version is, but it's an option. Easier to get a console game, I would think. And Pirates Gold is on the Sega Genesis. This game here, you can see it's a limited edition because I pre-ordered it. I don't usually pre-order games, but I have to pre-order this because it's Pirates. And it just came with, a, I think, a bonus, like, sales in the game or, you know, beta access. I did beta test it, and that got me my, or everyone that, that was part of beta testing does have their name in the credits. Unfortunately, it's not in the manual or the actual credits on the disc, but there's a readme file in, in there. I don't know if it's on, I guess it's on every version of the game. So if you dig in the disc and find the readme file, yeah, the beta testers are listed there. So part of me <laughs> is in the history of this game, but very, very, very little bit. So I know this is a long, long playthrough. It's going to be four parts. I I would doubt every, anyone wants to watch fully all four parts because it's kind of the same thing for hours as just sailing around. I heavily edited it down under four hours, but so I cut out more than six hours of it, but still it's quite long. And I talk during the whole thing because the game doesn't have a lot of sound effects, I guess. It's a rather quiet game. So I thought at least having me talk tells you somewhat what's going on, but I jump around so much because I heavily cut it up. So, on to the gameplay. Okay, so here we go. There's a few credits here at the beginning. Now, since I'm adding the, the commentary after the fact, it's going to be a hard time, have a hard time, I guess, keeping up at some points, like the beginning here. Things will move a little faster because I'm not giving myself enough time to talk, but beginning you can select to start a new career or do one of these scenario type things these expeditions and then you can select a time period as well and they do vary you know earlier time periods there'll be less cities the Spanish will have more dominance although the Spanish already dominate pretty much every time period I believe but also notice there's music there so I didn't want to talk <laughs> it's gonna drown me out when there is music the Spanish do dominate most of the time plus the amount of money available to get also will vary by time period number of ships you encounter so then you can select a nation to represent I select Dutch in part because I'm naming my character Meyer after Sid Meyer who is of Dutch descent but it doesn't matter what you select really it's just kind of more or less your starting point and what ship you start with the manual recommends English for be beginner players because supposedly it's easier in any case there's a difficulty level to select as well that plays into how hard it is pretty much obviously how hard anything is but Navigating the, the sea and the winds becomes tougher on the harder difficulties. You also get more money when you divide up the plunder on the harder difficulties. Here the game's asking for some information that you can look up in the manual. You want to get it correct to get off to a good start. Of course, there's also a skill to select. They're probably self-explanatory. A skill at fencing means you're better at fencing. But then there's wit and charm, which to me doesn't really matter. I guess governors might promote you faster, or the governor's daughter might help you faster. They just provide some information I don't really care about when I'm playing. You can also get married in the game, but you want to wait until you're well recognized, I guess, get a bunch of promotions, get some wealth. Otherwise, they won't agree to marry you. Thing is, I'll talk about it later when you, I guess we actually see meet a governor. But so here, there's an opening duel every time you play the game. Because you were a member of a crew and then your captain tells you. You can have that ship. So you jump on and duel the captain that's there. And 
basically away you go if your starter ship I was saying the other skills there's a skill at medicine which will likely give you a longer career you can drag out your career fairly long if you want I kept this one around I think, nine to ten years in game and that took me about ten hours to play through So here's the rundown of what's nearby of your starter city. I may mispronounce things. I don't know what this is, Krakow. It's just a wealthy Dutch city. The Dutch only have, I think, three or four cities at the start. So visiting the governor, he tells you who they're at war with. Now, he didn't want to introduce me to his daughter because I'm a nobody right now. So you go to the tavern to build up your crew. You can also purchase city information or treasure maps will sometimes appear. I don't really use the city information. When I have money, I buy it anyway just to complete the in-game information like you keep um all the data you buy it's under check information personal status cities city information oh there I go clicking it the maps you're holding so there's a lot of information to look over but I I just go where I want and attack what I want kind of thing I don't really care too much about how many soldiers a city has how many forts how much money I'll just find out when I get there. <laughs> I just attack when I'm near, you know, if I feel like it. But early on, your crew's too small to attack cities. And some big crews, like on the high seas, you'll notice this is what happens when you encounter a ship. You can investigate or you can just sail away. The Dutch have a lot of sloops. So most sloops in the area are probably Dutch since you're near a Dutch city. But Pirates also use sloops. And I don't want to attack the Dutch. Even though you can attack you want. The whole game I try to avoid attacking Dutch, French, or English. Sometimes they will attack you if they're not happy with you at the time. Even if you've done things for them. Like attacking allies of a nation may upset them. Sometimes if they're upset when you hail from news, the ship will attack you. Hail an English ship. And it's, you don't really know at the time <laughs> if it likes you or not. It may just attack you. It's odd though, because sometimes they don't really want to mess with you. So then they just run away right away. Alright, here's another Dutch ship. So you can hail for news. And the news does help if you're seeking out you know, easy targets. Like if Indians or malaria hit a city, that typically means the sh their soldiers have died, <laughs> so there's less soldiers defending the city. It can also hurt the economy though, so then you, know, you won't get as much money. Although Indians don't hurt the economy, I think malaria does. Of course, it may also say there's a new gold mine at a city, which means, oh, there's money there. So here the English attacked me. Fortunately, early on in the game, it's nice enough to not sink the one ship I have. But you got to be careful. You'll see in my playthrough, if you watch the whole thing, which is going to take a lot of effort. <laughs> this is really long. I mean, this video alone is long. And then I'm going to have, I think, it's going to be three or four parts probably four as I try to pare down ten hours into a few so yeah like I said you gotta be careful when sailing into a city because by chance I mean you may think you're on good terms but if you're not and you have a, a fleet of ships you're probably gonna lose one if they fire on you which also means you're gonna lose money and goods 
So I bought this treasure map and because it tells you where it's near, it's quite easy to find. I can often find most treasure on a single piece of the map. I think on the, early, on the easiest difficulty they give you more of the map, perhaps the whole thing. But when they're not near a city, it's a little, I guess, more of an effort to find, but I've played this game so much, even, have it, even though I probably didn't play in 20 years since loading this back up, I still remember it quite well. I mean, it's a big map, but at the same time, there's not a ton of land. It's a lot of little islands, of course, and you recognize things. I mean, there's certain islands, I mean, you can, just based on the shape and the kind of ways near it, you, you know the area it has to be. So it's not like I'm a, an amazing expert. <laughs> if you play enough, you just happen to, to get a good feel for it. Because if you look at the paper map that the game includes, of course it it doesn't show you trees and things like what you're seeing on those little maps in game. The paper map is more for city locations just to help you get around. But again, if you play a lot, you'll you'll have a good idea where everything is. It's a nice map to look at, but you do reach a point, I think, where you don't really need to reference it. So I'm bouncing around cities early on here. I didn't cut things out early on just so you can see kind of how the game goes when you start. Because you want to build up a crew, so that requires going to cities to recruit people at taverns. You can't just keep going to the tavern over and over in that one city. You have to go to different cities, so it takes a little while to build up a crew. I think most of the time, like the middle of the career, you'll probably be having, you know, one to two hundred people in the crew. It depends how big your fleet is, too. If you stick to one ship, you're stuck sticking to whatever, you know, the maximum crew is for that specific ship. Because each ship has different amount of cargo it can hold, how many people it can hold, how many cannons it can use. And there's a variety of ships, like around eight different ships or so, but once you get like something like a galleon, you're probably going to keep that. Every time you divide up the plunder, you can only keep one ship, so you're going to need to divide up the plunder whether you want to or not at some times, because we'll see later that it doesn't matter if you have a lot of money. The crew doesn't care until it gets its share. Like, if you're carrying a lot of money for a long time, the crew's going to get restless. They want you to divide up the plunder so they get their money. Of course, dividing up the plunder also gets you your money. Like, if you're carrying 100,000 gold, well, that's not all yours. You only get a portion of that when you divide up the plunder. You have to pay your crew, and the amount of money you get is dependent on the difficulty level. So... The higher the difficulty, the larger the portion. Okay, here I'm saving the game. I only left this one in, don't worry. I, I edit out all the rest. I just want you to, you know, see how the game works. So I left the first saving in here. Basically, you need a separate save disk like many games. Separate from the, the game program. And this game allows you to hold four save files per disk. And that also, each save disk also has a Hall of Fame on it, so when you end the game, wherever you save your final stats is the Hall of Fame you end up on, so it holds the top 10. Now you can see, look at 11 crew members already deserted. They're not happy. And when crew members leave, you lose some of your money too. They're taking money with them. They're just annoyed I'm not doing much <laughs> other than, than looking, you know, and stopping in cities to get a, a feel for what's going on, get recruit some people. I'm not fighting, though, and that's what they want. All right, so here's a ship battle. You can read all the details at the bottom. Most significant really being the winds. You got to 
keep track, they do change. Now I rammed into this ship before I could really go over things, but it gives you the you know the type of ship each side has, the number of crew, the number of cannons. And so here you get to select which sword you want. I typically go long sword every time. And this opponent has a long sword. The enemy shirt color tells you what they have. So this is long sword, yellow is cutlass, and green is rapier. The long sword is the mid you know, mid range, mid damage sword. So cutlass is less range, more damage, and rapier is more range, but it hardly hurts the person, so you really gotta hit them a lot. There is music at times. <laughs> As I'm recording this audio, I can't hear the actual game sounds right now. But I can see the audio track. There's a little more sound effects coming up. Which might be the wind. Yeah, I'm not sure if the wind would drown me out. But the game doesn't have a lot of, a lot of sound effects. Music only pops up when you, know, you win a battle, or you get a promotion. Then the wind can be noisy, and then there's just the basic little sounds in battle. You might also hear like a humming. That's just the Commodore. Like when it, I used to think it was the Commodore monitor, but now because I don't <laughs> hear recording, it's clearly the actual Commodore that makes that that kind of buzzing noise. You gotta turn the volume up kind of high to hear it, I think, but it's there. So you can see I'm, I'm outmanned quite a bit. They have more than double my crew. You can also change between battle and full sails. You're more likely to take sail damage if you have your full sails on, though. But it helps you, you know, go faster, either to run away or to close distance. Early on with not a lot of crew, it can be risky, but you gotta take your chances. You know, to fight an enemy with a lot more crew, but that's why I choose the fencing skill. You get a better chance at winning duels. And I rely heavily on that, because I get myself into uh, some really lopsided battles, at least as far as the number of men the enemy has and what I have, but I often take chances and I usually win them too. Problem is, if you're left with very little crew, even if you win the fight, you could be in trouble because you need enough men to man the ships. Whether you have one ship or m many ships. Of course, if you have many ships, those guys are not involved in this battle, so they're still manning the other ships. So this crew is just for the one ship you're currently on. This battle looks bad, but I win it. In this full playthrough, I only lose one battle, but I cut it out and reloaded. I didn't want to waste my career rotting away in a cell. Alright, some music's gonna pop on now. Now I will show you what happens when you lose a battle, whether it's a sword duel or a ship sinking. You can see I captured a pirate. You can hold him for ransom or ask him information, but I never ask them information. I can. It's not a ton of money, but I just if I see a silver train or treasure fleet at a city that I uh, that I go to, then then I'll attack. <laughs> like I don't I don't seek those out unless if the information's there and I'm nearby. Okay, I'll attack it. But, but sometimes it's a lot of money. Sometimes it, you know, it's a fair amount, but not a ton. I'm gonna go over here and walk to this city. You can't have land battles if 
you approach a city on foot, you can attack from the land. It just becomes basically a 2D real-time strategy game, I guess. Now this city doesn't have a fort. Towns that don't have forts are very easy to attack. I'm not going to attack this town, but it also only has 50 soldiers. If you attack a town with a lot more soldiers, like if you have a lot more, there's a good chance you'll also take it over. And you don't own the town, you just get to assign another nation if you want. Like This town, since I've already played through, I know this town gets taken over by the Spanish, and then I'll later take it back, but I don't give it to the French, I give it to the Dutch instead. Something else you can do, now I sell my things here, but these prices are really low. You can work the economy, you can buy low, sell high. Basically, if you go to a, a poor city, prices are generally low. Go to a rich city, and they're high. I'm not too concerned with money, though, at least not on this difficulty level. I'm going to get plenty of money because I'm good with the maps. And there's a story element to the game. It's not deep or anything. You're mostly creating your own stories. This is like a you know sandbox, open world style game. Which there weren't a lot of back in 1987. But the little bit of story is there's four family members to rescue and each one has a piece of a map. However, you can find the treasure on one piece of the map. So the way the game is created is that you rescue all four family members, you get all four pieces of a map to a lost Inca treasure. But, you rescue one family member, you get a quarter piece of the map, and if you find that treasure before rescuing another family member, they'll have a different map for you. So essentially you can get four Inca treasures, which is exactly what I do every single time, because <laughs> I think the maps pretty easy to figure out, especially once you've sailed around a few times the world, you learn kind of what it looks like. Occasionally you get a really tough one to find, which I do receive in this game. There are a couple I wasn't sure about, but I'm able to find them anyway. We'll, you know, we'll see that later if you stick with and watch through every single part, which I know is a lot. But I just really wanted to document this game and give a full playthrough even though it's really long. But I'm going to cut down the other videos a lot. So the other parts are going to jump from spot to spot. You're not really going to get perhaps not a great feel for where I'm at at all times. So that's why I wanted to do this first part. Mostly at least the opening without removing parts of the video or speeding them up, which I will do a lot of later. So once again, I'm out, outgunned quite a bit here. Well, not outgunned. We both have six guns now. But they have such a large crew. It's smart to try to shoot them a bunch and you know, eliminate the crew before getting into a duel. Enemies will run away. Now, they're not going to run away since they have more guys, but if you have a lot more, like you have a ship with 200 men and they only have, you know, 50, they're going to run away immediately. And it can be hard to catch them, depending on the ships. If they have a, a sloop and you have a galleon, you're not going to catch them because you're going to have a big, slow ship and they're going to just speed away. That's why later in the game, when you, you know, the enemies fear you, you're going to have to make a good, quick first shot to damage them to have a chance at catching them before they run away. But you also probably won't care too much about small ship battles. You'll just attack cities and big ships. That's why I like to fight the Spanish. One, well, they're all over the place, so there's a lot more targets. And two, they have the galleons. They're not going to run into galleons unless they're run by, you know, the Spanish. So if you're fighting the French and English, yeah, you're not going to get the greatest ships from them. Frigates from the English are decent, but the French use a lot of pinnace. Pinnace is, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce everything. But those are tiny. I never use those. Yeah, they're fast, but I care more about 
carrying a big crew and attacking cities late in the game to take those over and being able to haul all the cargo you get. This is another risky battle. I only have four men left when I win it. It's kind of insane that you can win these battles with even no men when you're the last man standing, but... I have to sink this ship because I just don't have the crew to man it. If, if I were to keep it, I'd lose it anyway. I would just say, not enough crew, ship lost. And when you lose a ship, you're also losing goods and money. <laughs> well, fortunately, 12 guys decide to join. Sometimes you get crew, sometimes you don't. More likely to get crew to join you, I think, when you defeat a pirate rather than just just a random regular ship, like a trader. So it's good to skip investigating, especially when you don't are in bad shape like me. I don't have enough crew to really get into a battle, so I try to avoid them when I can if I know I don't have a great chance. I just check in the map. If you search and are in the wrong place, it wastes a few days. You just have to line your men up and hit the search button. So now some music is going to pop on and tell me how much gold I got. Be a few thousand. I'm not sure how high it goes. Maybe twelve to fifteen thousand, maybe on these random treasure maps. You see those squiggly things in the water? Those are reefs. You don't want to sail over them, or you might lose the ship. All these other dots on the screen now are just you know, meant to look like waves. So you can't zoom out. Now I know where I am because I know the map well, but what you can do, I think I do it one time in the video just to show you. Is take um pause the game, bring up that menu and there's like a sun something, sun site or something. <laughs> I don't know. Basically you're trying to get I think your longitude will give you some coordinates. You only can get one, latitude or longitude, I don't recall which, and then you just kind of have to know where you are otherwise, unless, I think, if you took this skill at navigation, I think you get both readings, but it's not too hard to find a way around. I do oversail at one point and end up somewhere I didn't mean to be, but map. It's big, but it's not gigantic. Where you'll, you know, there's no reason to really go to certain points, like the corners, the upper corners of the map. There's really nothing out there. There are, it depends on the time frame. There's two cities high on the map, and that's it. St. Augustine in Florida. And Bermuda. I don't bother going to Bermuda in this game, but I do have to go to St. Augustine for something. That's the very tip of the map of the sea. It just ends there. It doesn't let you go any higher. Nope, not enough crew, I lost a ship. And that means I have to get rid of cargo as well. There is a maximum, no, nowhere near that now, but 255 is the max you can carry of any one thing. So even if you have a gigantic fleet of galleons, 
you have space, there's a cap on how much you can carry per item. Of course, food is the most important item because the crew is eating it at all times, and you can run out of food. Sailing into that city. One thing, as I think I mentioned, I don't recall if I mentioned it or not. It's gonna, I'm going to repeat myself, I'm sure, because these videos are long. Is There aren't a lot of wars in this game. You see, they're allied with the English, and that's all I have to say. You need wars. They're random, though. Every time you play the game, you're going to get different outcomes, different people allying and have going to war. But you need wars because... You need promotions. Or, I guess you don't need them. It depends what you want to do. If you just want to attack, attack, and don't care about getting the highest score or rescuing your family members, well, then you don't need promotions necessarily. You won't become as popular, I guess. You won't maybe recruit as many people at the tavern. But, you also probably wouldn't be able to get married because you need some kind of... Uh, recognition like like the women are always being escorted by someone and you have to outrank them or be near their rank for them to be willing to marry you it's another thing I think it just impacts your final standing when the game ends you get a you get a score and you get your post pirate career title which you'll see at the very end of <laughs> I think will be part four in this series. So otherwise though you can just be a pirate and do whatever the heck you want. And not worry about your accommodations. But if you want, you know, to get promoted by each nation or at least one nation, somebody's gotta be at war. Cause you can only do so much capturing other pirates. Cause if you capture pirates near a city, it's a good chance that city's governor will be happy if you bring them to them. But it takes a lot to reach, you know, the top rank, which I believe is Duke. I don't quite make it there. Largely because there's a severe lack of wars for a long time. We'll see the French go to war with the Spanish briefly. And since I'm focused on only attacking the Spanish, it's the only way I'm going to get my promotions. Fortunately, the Dutch will go to war with Spanish later in the game, but it takes a long, you know, I'd be getting promotions right now if I could, but there's just, nobody cares that I'm attacking the Spanish. So when you get a promotion, that's how, it's tied to the family members because when you get a promotion, they'll tell you, oh, this person knows about your long-lost family member. They're currently at this city, so then you got to seek them out, defeat them in a duel, and you get a piece of a map to find your family member. Now, if you need more than one piece of the map, then you got to get another promotion, find the next person. So you would need four promotions to get all four pieces of the map. That's why the promotions are important. So... If you get promoted fast and you can find the family members on one piece of the map, and then the Inca treasures on one piece of the map, you can get all that stuff done relatively quick and get a whole bunch of gold. It's a lot of fame and wealth early on, and then, I mean, that's what I'm aiming for. And then, you know, spend the rest of your time building up a huge crew and just getting out there and dominating the map. Which is what I tend to do and what I'm doing in this in this playthrough is my goal is to get all four family members quickly. And I do get them. It just takes a little longer than I would have liked just because I can't get the promotions. But 
but that's what makes you know this game great is a ton of replayability you just don't know what you're gonna what's gonna happen of course you can play as a Spanish and just try to wipe out the English French and Dutch the problem with being Spanish is a lot of the time they won't trade with pirates so they'll be attacking and right, there's more music coming again in promotion probably talking when some of the music's appearing I wasn't paying <laughs> complete attention but saying you know if you fight for the Spanish and you get tons of cargo you might not ever have anywhere to sell it if the uh, Spanish towns won't won't trade with you because here they're telling me I gotta go find Duke Delgado he knows where my sister is or he has a piece of the map anyway so I have to go to Camp Peach this is part of the map that I don't go too often unless I have to because it's a little isolated this is why I take prisoners I get gold the only thing is that sometimes they can escape anytime you leave a city there's a chance that your prisoners will jump overboard the one thing that people might not like <laughs> it's pretty silly but it's 1987 the game I was saying about marriage I think the game it does have I guess I don't know if it's a score but it does rank the women you can marry basically there's four different looks to the governor's daughters now they change you know hair color skin color outfit color but they're typically four different ones and I think it does kind of well you can tell by who's escorting them like a duke escorts what the game considers the top person to marry so there's kind of a ranking to them so here's another treasure map I know that's near Eleuthera if I have the city name right it's up north north of Cuba between Cuba and Florida a lot of stuff ends up out in those little islands. So I gotta go ahead to Camp Peach. I don't know if I'm going there right now. I don't probably am. Now this is over directly west on the other side of the, of the Yucatan. I guess it's on the Yucatan. Just you gotta circle around the landmass to get over to it. There's three towns over there. It's also, though, a good spot to run into galleons. Which are the big ships I want. There's different types of galleons. War galleon, regular galleon, fast galleon. Because they're the biggest ships. They hold all the crew, all the cargo. This is Port Royal. Port Royal. Really well-known port as a starting spot if you play as the English. And there's also a series of computer games. I think there's a couple parts, unless it's only one, but they are called Port Royal. I briefly looked at one of those. There's some similarities to this, but it's not quite the same. Okay, the galleons, there's a couple spots on the map where they seem more common. Over where I'm headed is one of them. And sometimes you'll find them around your Gibraltar area. Generally, they're rare early on, at least. Pirate hunters, when you. Oh, music. I'm getting these early promotions just for bringing them other pirates that they wanted captured. Yeah, what was I saying? The galleons? <laughs> Once you get the Spanish angry, pirate hunters will come after you. And those guys from the Spanish usually 
have galleons as well. Because late in the game, I like to build a, sh a fleet of of galleons. So the prime ships, I think, as I said, they're not great in ship battles. And if you're fighting a little ship, because they'll just run away, outrun you. But but they're the big imposing ships that are great if you're just going to be attacking cities. Because you need to care, be able to carry a lot. When you attack cities, half the time their gold is hidden away. They know you're coming, but you can usually still get a bunch of items to sell, like goods and sugar and food. That's where we're headed, Camp Peach. They have a lot of soldiers, three forts. So it's not a city I would attack right now. The one sword battle I lose, you know, can tell this is eight times speed. It looks like I'm headed a different way. I don't recall what exactly I was doing, <laughs> but basically I put the video together first. I cut things out. I put some spots. I sped them up because it does take a while to sail around. Looks like I'm going to Gibraltar. I don't recall why. Is there another guy? Oh, just getting that promotion. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, the promotion I just got must have said to go to Gibraltar, and that's an easier one to visit. There's no fort. You can sail right in. But for some reason, I'm sneaking in anyway. It doesn't matter if you visit the governor of the tavern. The guy will just be there. He'll be sneaking out the back. These guys aren't typically too hard to defeat. Now he'll tell me something about my sister. a while to load. Alright, this will look familiar. If you were paying attention earlier, this is actually right by the first treasure map that we had. Well, the Spanish took one of my prisoners, but they never give me a promotion. Generally, you can't get much out of these Spanish towns. Like, I don't think anyone will join my crew. Can't divide up the plunder there. They probably wouldn't trade with me. Not sure if I try. But they'll just say, we don't trade with pirates. Oh, this guy, maybe he does. Oh, this one will, after I just said that. So I'm going to buy up some cheap stuff and resell it later. You could tell I saved it there. <laughs> it was a little jump. So I edited out my disk swapping saving. what I'm doing. Am I attacking the town just because I can? I think I might be. He says they don't have a fort, but you still get the scale of the walls of the fort. 
there's a number of things like that where it doesn't make complete sense but they just have the one thing written I think for each type of attack that's when you attack a town you always gotta duel at a fort cause you can't duel on a ship you gotta duel somewhere maybe they have a fort nobody really uses so it's an easy one to, easy town to attack I don't have enough men to take it over though this town doesn't even have much money and I stupidly bought a bunch of stuff so I don't have room yeah I don't think I, I wasn't really planning on attacking then I guess on a whim I decided well let me attack them I shouldn't have bought anything because then I could have just taken it I only got 340 gold pieces which is nothing so I just angered the Spanish a bit more is all And there you can see I sped it up. So I get you can hail people for news. I do that a lot because it does give you an idea of what's going on. You can see if anyone's gone to war since you last visited a city. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing. It's like, well, oh, I have no clue why well, I didn't just go straight after map location this takes a little bit to load when you attack a city it's setting up a close-up of your approach so you're not actually there yet you have to dodge the guns by the fort this fort only has 12 guns which isn't too bad some of them will have more than 30 guns, which will do a lot of damage if you get hit. Problem with attacking cities, I just got hit there, is the wind. The wind is often not where you want it to be. So this wind is working against me. Sometimes it's smart to just get the heck out of there, which is... I think what I'm doing here is it'll just take way too long to reach the fort with the w way the winds are going. So then I chose to try a land battle. Now, I wasn't paying attention, but maybe the treasure fleet or something was here. Although it's not now. I'm not sure why I'm so set on taking this town. So the land battles, you typically have like three, depends on the number of crew you have. You have a couple, I guess here I have two, so there's three sets of guys. They're divided into groups. What you, you typically want to get into the trees right away because then the computer can't see you or they have to get really close to see you so you can move all the groups at once or you can you know jump between each group all you really need to do is get one group onto the fort and then it'll switch to that duel but you could also try to reduce the number of enemies here So right now they're not moving because they don't know where I am. But they'll, as soon as they see one of your groups, they'll go right after you. So you can try to lure them away with one group. And get the other one up to the fort. But morale plays a part too. So sometimes they'll run away. Or sometimes your own guys will run away when you just lose control of them. So this game... It has so many different things going on, like I said, you have ship battles, land battles, which are similar to real-time strategies, and you got sword duels, just this open world where 
there's just so much randomness to what's going on as far as wars and where the enemy ships just suddenly appear. So in a way, it's a little like um, it's an old style action RPG. I'd probably mostly call it an action game. It certainly has adventure elements too, though. The lack of main major story, I think, keeps it from being you know, a true adventure game. There's a lot more action to it. So the the expeditions that you can play are like um I haven't played one in a very long time, and I didn't really play them much. They're a single. go back um the single goal in mind is you don't go around dividing up plunder constantly the first time you divide up the plunder ends the scenario the longer you go without dividing up the plunder the more restless the crew will get so you, you really do have to keep doing that the negative thing is it, it uses time. A few months go by while you're waiting. And you have to get rid of all but one of your ships. Okay, here I think I decided just to go to Camp Peach. I'm not sure why. I'm quite certain I knew where that map was. Yeah, I'm, I'm in fast forward mode right now. This is where I oversail. I, I thought I wasn't as far north as I ended up being. I thought I was still around the Honduras, but that's actually the Yucatan right there. So I am farther north than I realized. I'm just going to hit the edge of the map, which is that. Like, oh no, I went too far north. Alright, I'm about to hit the end of part one, so this will pick up again in part two. Thanks for watching.